the city of Conyers, Georgia, was recognized for its tranquility. However, on January 13, 2010, this calm atmosphere was disrupted when Jarmecca Nikki Whitehead, age 34, was discovered murdered in her residence. The horrific finding was made by her 16-year-old twin daughters, Jasmia and Tasmia Whitehead. One of the sisters had rushed outside, calling for assistance from a sheriff's deputy who was in the vicinity. Who was Nikki Whitehead? Nikki was described as an incredible individual by her longtime friend, Yucca Harris, in an interview with The Real Murders of Atlanta. Despite not having a stable background, Nikki persevered to obtain her license and became a hairstylist. To broaden her career prospects, Nikki enrolled at Border College in Atlanta to pursue a degree in fashion. Her instructor, Rhonda Anderson, characterized her as extremely enthusiastic and a very devoted mother. When the twins' biological father learned of Nikki's pregnancy, he abandoned her and relocated to Canada, as reported by Atlanta television journalist Shawnia Chavis in The Real Murders of Atlanta. What happened to Nikki Whitehead? Nikki was discovered deceased in a bathtub filled with water, having suffered multiple stab wounds. She was clad in a nightgown and was described as just covered in blood, according to Greg Carson, a retired lieutenant from the Conyers Police Department. It was horrific. Nikki exhibited numerous lacerations on her forearms and hands, along with stab wounds to her back and neck, a bite mark on her arm, and defensive injuries. The coroner estimated that her death occurred between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. on January 13, 2010. Law enforcement officials reported no indications of forced entry at the scene. A trail of blood indicated that Nikki had been dragged from her bedroom to the bathroom. Investigators also discovered a shattered vase and a blood-stained couch in the living room. Forensic evidence was gathered for DNA testing, and an impression of the bite mark was documented. I have encountered many crime scenes with significant bloodshed, but this was unlike anything I had ever witnessed, remarked Carson. The smell was overwhelming, and you could even taste it. Twins Jasmia and Tasmia interviewed by police. At the police headquarters, the twins recounted the events of the day. They indicated that they departed from home at 8 a.m. and proceeded to school, arriving approximately 10 minutes after the opening bell. Following the conclusion of the school day, they located their mother, as they informed the authorities. Detectives gathered from the twins that Nikki's boyfriend, Robert Head, aged 55 at the time, also resided with them. The girls reported that Head, a long-distance truck driver, had been present in the house the previous day, but was not there at the time of their account to the officials. The sisters were subsequently placed in the care of their great-grandmother while investigators made efforts to reach Head. Surveillance video changes course of the case. Detectives uncovered surveillance footage from a gas station located across the street from Nikki's residence, dated January 13th. Upon reviewing the recording, investigators were taken aback to find the twins present at the service station at 10.10 10 a.m. The girls had previously claimed they left home for school at 8 a.m. We needed to understand why they were being untruthful, stated Dunn. During the second round of questioning, the twins were interviewed individually. We presented them with the inconsistencies in their accounts, remarked Dunn. The police noted a change in the girls' demeanor. They were no longer as cooperative and sorrowful as they had been during the initial interview. They were becoming increasingly dismissive, observed Nichols. Before concluding their questioning of the twins, investigators collected blood samples and dental impressions. Who killed Nikki Whitehead? Forensic analysis confirmed that the blood found at the crime scene belonged to Nikki and her twin daughters. Evidence indicated that Tasmaya had bitten Nikki. Four months into the investigation, supported by forensic findings, inconsistencies in timelines, and journal entries, law enforcement apprehended the twins on charges of felony murder and aggravated assault. At this juncture, detectives noted a stark contrast in the sisters' demeanor compared to their initial portrayal 
as vulnerable victims in January. They exhibited vile behavior using profanity and making threats, remarked Carson. It was a complete transformation akin to Jekyll and Hyde. This revelation was shocking. No one could fathom that, stated Chavis. It was entirely unexpected. The girls were offered a plea deal, which they accepted. As part of the agreement, they participated in a video interview where they recounted the events leading to Nikki's murder. In the disturbing footage, the twins recounted their altercation with their mother that morning. The sisters received 30 years behind bars.